Hey guys, it's Arissa and welcome back to my channel. I feel like this is long overdue. I have not talked about my favorite makeup brushes in quite some time, at least all in one video. And the last time I posted a top 10, it was years ago. So I came up with my updated top 10 and I'm really focusing on the brushes that I would be okay with having, like only these 10, if I had to get rid of all my other ones or if I had to start from scratch. I quickly wanted to mention a brand that is not featured in my top 10, but I love the brushes, and this is SL Miss Glam. Her brushes are beautiful. I ended up getting one of her booklets, it's a collection, and it's pretty pricey. So I ended up getting it when she had a sale. So I wanted to mention it because I think they're good quality brushes, but because you have to buy them in a bundle or a collection, it's really not fair if I mentioned one brush here, one brush there in my top 10, because you'd have to buy the whole thing. <laughs> So no surprise here, just like my last top 10, I do have some real techniques, but they're a little bit different. So one that was featured in my previous one is the sculpting brush. I still love it to this day. In that video though, I mentioned that I like it to stamp my contour powder in here and then blend it out. But now I like to use it for foundation. Another great thing about this brush is I can wet it right before I use it or clean it right before I use it. And even when it's damp, the foundation applies really well, and if anything, I think it almost acts like a beauty blender, not to say that it's gonna apply just like a sponge, but I mean, um, the makeup just applies more dewy and natural looking because the sponge or because of the brush being damp. So I mentioned it last time, but the cut is really similar to their Expert Face Brush, but it's bigger and it just covers more ground. And I love how dense it is. It's not too overly dense, but then at the same time, it's really soft and a great way to buff in your foundation. The next one I have is the Instapop Cheek Brush. This is a newer one, and I like to use this for multiple things, but especially to stamp in my under eye powder. So you guys know I love the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder in Diffuse Light, and this is a beautiful brush to stamp in that powder right in here to highlight my under eye. You could also use this to apply your foundation, but I've learned through experience that you cannot use it damp like you could with the sculpting brush. It doesn't apply very well, but overall I do like it for multiple uses, but my favorite definitely is to stamp in my diffuse light right under my eyes. And of course this is originally marketed as a blush brush, so it can be good for right in the apples of the cheeks to apply your blush, but for me, I love this for under the eyes. And my third favorite brush by Real Techniques is the setting brush, and this is perfect for applying your highlight. And the setting brush, of course, is also good to apply your under eye setting powder if you'd like, or even maybe buff in your under eye concealer, but I personally love this shape for applying your powder highlight. It's that perfect balance between being fluffy but not overly fluffy, so it packs a punch with the highlight, but you can also kind of buff it in to make it look really diffused and natural. And because it's not too big, you can really apply that highlight exactly where you want it, and I do prefer applying my highlight with something like this over a fan brush. So my favorite cut of brush is one that I've seen other people say they don't really use. I could have 10 of these and I will use them all the time. And this is the angled brush. So this one is by Morphe, it's the S13. And this is one by Wet n Wild. You can get it at the drugstore. So although they're the same type of brush, I wanted to include two of them just to show you that you can go one or the other and it's interchangeable. But at the same time, I like having multiples of this because one, I would use to apply powder all over my face. Again, I like that flat area right here, almost like the Instapop cheek brush, but not as flat, and I use it to stamp on my powder. So I like to bake with powder like this, but also just set my foundation in general. I'll also use one for bronzer and my blush. I like to apply my bronzer, my contour, and then go up right in my hairline. I also apply my blush with this. And with the Wet n Wild brushes, especially this one, I haven't had any issues with washing it over and over again. It doesn't shed. And I just have a bunch of these Wet n Wild brushes because this one in particular I use every day. And with Morphe, you really can't go wrong with their brushes because it's similar to like MAC quality, but you can get it for a fraction of the price. So I still love this one. I've been using this one for two, three years now, and it's been great. So I just 
personally love this cut and I had to include two of them in here. And my last type of brush that I love is a stippling brush. And this one just happens to be Wet n Wild. I think this is a good one. I've been using this one for a couple years, three years now, and it's still going strong. And with these types of brushes too, I like the SL Miss Glam version in their collection. So I like the stippling brush from her. I like the angled brush. So that's just something to keep in mind. But if you wanted to get it individually, I think this is a good one. And the stippling brush for me is like the fairy godmother that just makes everything look better. So if I bake my under eye or bake my face, I take this and just like dust it all away. Or if I put some hourglass diffuse light under my eyes, I will use this to kind of like dust it all away. You could also use this to apply product like blush or some people use stippling brushes to put on like a BB cream or foundation and make it look really sheer. But I just love it to dust away all my product, like the excess product to make my look really seamless. Another good way to use the stippling brush is if you wanted to buff out your blush a little bit to make it look a little bit more natural. Like maybe if you applied a little too much, you can just go in with this and blend it out a little bit. So overall, I think this is a great multitasking brush and I always have multiple stippling brushes with me. <laughs> So the first one I'll mention is a classic. I think I'll always have this in my collection and I have quite a few of them. This is the MAC 217. If I could only have one eyeshadow brush for the rest of my life, I'd be okay with the MAC 217. So I've really changed the way I apply my eyeshadow in the two years that I was away from YouTube, or I guess the year and a half I was away from YouTube. You guys may have noticed this, but now I really tend to focus on the outer half of my eye. And this is one of the brushes that really does it for me because all I do is take some matte eyeshadows and I'll start light and then just build and build and build until I get this right in here. And this is the look that I'll get from a MAC 217 or any brush similar to this. I have Morphe ones that look like this. I have some less expensive ones that look like this, but overall I think nothing beats the MAC 217, at least from what I've used, because I think it's the perfect shape. It's a little bit more dense and short and precise compared to the Morphe one that I have. If you guys have any dupes for the 217, let me know because I'm always up for trying new ones. But I just love this size. I think it's perfect, especially because my eyes are kind of small. I think it fits the eyeshadow perfectly. And really, it just blends out the eyeshadow really well. Next is another fluffy brush, and I could use it the exact same way as the MAC 217, but it looks different. This is one from Wet n Wild. I don't really know the name of it, but it's just a big blending brush. So if we wanna compare this with the 217, you can tell that it's a lot bigger and it fans out a little bit more. It's a little bit fatter, but I think it still does a great job with applying eyeshadow just like the 217. Like I could do the same look with this brush too. It's also great to just kind of like make everything seamless. Like if you wanted to go on your outer edge of your eyeshadow to really blend it out with a clean brush, this is a good one. And I have a bunch of these because let's be real, I don't like cleaning my makeup brushes as much as I should. Like you would think it's therapeutic, but eh, like I feel like a lot of us just like to hold off and procrastinate when it comes to cleaning makeup brushes. Um, so I have multiples of this and I think they're holding up really well. And because I don't know all the specific names, I'll leave links to them below. And I have two more eyeshadow brushes. This is another one by MAC, and this is the 239. And this is a flat brush to pack on eyeshadow on the lid. So for my everyday look, you can tell I don't really have anything on my lid, but if I were to put something on there, like a shimmery eyeshadow, it packs the eyeshadow really well, so you get pretty good intensity on the lid, and you could always wet this to get an even more foiled look, like if you're using a shimmery eyeshadow. And I think this is another classic one by MAC. I have a lot of eyeshadow brushes that are just stored away, and I still think that after all the ones I've tried, this is still my favorite flat eyeshadow brush. And my final brush is from Sigma, and this is a mini size because it was a free gift with purchase, and this is the MAC Smudge E21. And this is so good, I have thought about purchasing the full size a few times, but this one is really doing well for me, even though it's like the mini size. I mean, overall, the brush size is the same. This is such a little brush, but it does an amazing job 
with smoking out the lower lash line. Out of all the pencil brushes and smudging brushes I've tried, this smokes out the lower lash line like no other and it's so soft because that area is really delicate. So the way that I use it is I will take some eyeliner and smudge it on my lower lash line, like the outer half of my lower lash line, and I'll smudge it out with this and then set that with some eyeshadow. And it just makes everything look a little bit more blurred because I don't want it to be really harsh down there. So who knew that I'd be using my free gift with purchase more than anything else that I've ever gotten from Sigma. And those are my top 10 makeup brushes at the moment. If you guys have any of your own brush recommendations, please leave them below. And makeup brushes are like the unsung heroes where a lot of times if your makeup look is awesome, you'll credit the foundation or the blush or the powder and not so much what you use to apply it. So it's sometimes good to talk about those tools, the ones that you really need to bring a look together. So thanks to those of you who requested an updated brush video and if you have any other video requests please let me know. I do post videos on Sundays and Thursdays and I'm also thinking about going back and revisiting some other categories from my channel that I needed to update. For example, the planner video that is pretty popular on my channel when I put together my DIY planner. I am starting to get back into having a physical pen and paper planner. So if you're interested in something like that, maybe if you're a big makeup fan, but also a stationary fan, that could be for you. Or if you have any other makeup requests, let me know. So I will see you guys again on Sunday. Have a good rest of your day. Bye.